All right, and welcome, StarCraft Nation. This is Venerati bringing you yet another game today. We have a little advertisement going on down here. I've never actually been to that site, so I might check that out, actually. Speaking of checking things out, we have Legal Mind over here spawning as the Purple Zerg. Now, this is the second round in between Legal Mind and Korean. He is spawning as the Red Terran, as you could obviously see there. We are playing on Lost Temple today, so they are actually spawning as the uh, longest rush distance in between each other right now. So, I don't know really if that's going to affect their uh, if they're, it's going to affect their builds. Obviously, it will in some subconscious way. However, right now they haven't scouted, so it's going to be interesting to see if their openers are adequately attuned to their positioning. Because you know the positioning can actually make a pretty big difference. Not so much on Lost Temple. Maybe if you see the uh, the two bases like this, where you have that small air gap, might be a little more likely to see some air. I actually see Legal Mind uh, supply locking himself there ever so slightly, then Chrono Boosting out his economy, so not really going to choose to save up those Chrono Boosts as of yet. Of course, he does have another charge right now, so interesting to see whether he's going to choose to keep that or not. Let's go ahead and look at the APM this early on in the game. And yeah, it's, it's whatever. I've always, uh, it's been interesting to see players, their APM and their general success or failure rate. I've seen a lot of games played where a lot of people would have crazy APMs and they would lose. And they would lose pretty brutally too. Uh, actually some of the games I've cast myself, we see uh, Huck generally keeps a pretty high APM. I think it's somewhere around 200 APM. He lost to several players who were uh, below 100, sitting around 90. So pretty obvious that it's not the APM that makes the player, it's uh, really the tactics that you use and how you deploy your APM. Because, you know, I can sit here with my command center all day long and click rally points, and that will completely make my APM insane, but it doesn't mean I'm really doing anything special. So, for all you guys out there who really think that the APM makes that big of a difference, unless you're top, 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 top tier, I'm talking like 0.01% top tier player, which you probably aren't watching this right now, then you really don't have to worry about it. You should focus on more important things like how your openers and your build orders. Of course, we do see the command center upgrading into an orbital command right now, so it's going to be interesting to see whether he chooses to scan or drop down a mule. Those mules are really important in the uh, Terran economy. They can really boost it. Let's go ahead and look at that. He's bringing a 400 to about 500 uh, income per minute ratio, and let's go ahead and see what that mule impact does. Boom, all the way to 660. So those mules make a huge impact on the income of course, we do have a reactor coming down, so we might see some early uh, mass marines. It's going to be interesting to see whether he chooses to upgrade those or does an early push. Those early marine pushes against a uh, against the Protoss have become a little bit more potent in the sense that Zealot's uh, time, the build order time, has actually been increased. So, if you used to play Zealot, or, or if you have played Zealot and you used to use zealots to dispatch marines it's a little bit harder to get a substantial force out if you're not expecting the marine push now of course that's where scouting comes into a huge pivotal point if you do not scout you're basically blindfolding yourself upon your enemy's uh, choice of units and unit composition as we all know makes a huge 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 impact on whether you win or lose a battle and if you don't know that you will learn it quite soon especially if you choose to watch starcraft nation because i will point that out and i will drill it into your brain However, we do see a command center coming down for Korean, so we are going to see an early expansion from the Terran player, which is a good break from a lot of players that I see, not necessarily top tier players, but we see a lot of Terran players will wall off this front door and just basically hide inside the base. Myself included, I do it plenty of times. It really depends on what I'm, what build I'm going for, but it's so easy as a Terran player to wall off and just basically sit back on your haunches and wait for them to wait for you to be attacked leaving yourself in a bad position. Of course, we do see a SCV transfer going on right here, and we do see another orbital command coming down. I'm not really sure about that transfer, seeing as the saturation rate on these minerals is... is he's not even close to a full saturation. But, you know, he's, he's a better player than I am, so I will go with that. We do see one tech lag coming down and a third barracks, so we are going to see three racks. I don't know if he's going to stay with his three racks and push. So we do have quite a few Marines down, actually. Let's go ahead and look at the units tab right here. We have nine Marines to one Zealot and four sentries. So, Legal Mind, if he was attacked right now, we'd have a little bit of a hard time. We do see that SCB totally eating it right there. That Zealot just said, you know what? Get out of here. I don't want you. And he decided to stick his plasma blade right in his face. So, you, sir, are a champion. And we have a Nexus coming down with a pylon right here on the natural. 
for Legal Mind. Legal Mind is choosing to go a little bit more macro. And we do see an Immortal coming down. Now, Immortals, as we all know, are really good against those Marauders. They will just tear Marauders to shreds. But against Mass Marines, unfortunately, they are not so spectacular. As we can see, the weapon speed on them is really, really low. And they do do 20 damage, which is a lot. But their real quality, where the Immortals truly shine, is that armored attack. Look at that. 50 damage versus armor. That is crazy. So they are great for breaking bunkers. They are great for knocking down planetary fortresses or any building you so choose to knock down. Of course, we have these gateways and a Twilight Cancel coming in, so we're probably going to see Legs or Blink coming in here relatively soon. Either way, really excited to see how this Immortal is going to be able to be able to deal with this ex just pure marine army. We have 20 marines on the field right now. So, Korean is in the advantage as it goes for military might right now. Now, whether he chooses to use it or not is another question as we see them completely deployed in some sort of skirmish line right here with the bunker holding the line. And he is kind of leaving himself out. I'm surprised we haven't seen any sort of, uh, any, any sort of, Engineering Bay go down for upgrades because upgrades will make a huge huge difference in the long game Especially one upgrade is going to be a hundred minerals and a hundred Vespian gas So for 20 Marines, that's gonna make a huge difference. It's really well worth it And of course we see the observer. Oh the observer how you are so beautiful and so useful this is observer just kind of sits there and basically denies Korean any sort of any sort of privacy these guys are the official big brothers. They are always watching. They are always there. Of course, if you are being observant at all, not saying the Korean isn't being observant, he's probably focused on other more important things, but you can go ahead and just scan and get these Marines to kill this guy. That's what I do, because I really don't like being spied on as a Terran player. Of course, as a Protoss player, I will just spam these guys all over the place, really to make sure that I know what exactly my enemy is doing so I can deploy my forces in the most effective manner. Because you can have... You know, you can have these armies the way they're lined up. They're starting to uh, kind of normalize and even out. But if you are off, if you're off foot, and let's see that uh, marine marauder ball comes in here for a drop. If you don't see that, your mineral line is going to be pillaged, and then you're going to have to run your army all the way up there. And by the time you come up here, half your probes are dead. And he's done a lot of damage, and he has received no damage himself at this point. So. Keeping a battle awareness using those observers is a huge key. So look, this observer is sitting here. He's able to tell Legal Mind what is what he's about to come up to. And we actually do see a push coming from Korean. So Korean is going to try to push his luck up here. He does actually stim right now. I don't know if that stim was a little bit early, but he is coming here trying to snipe these, these zealots. These zealots do have legs. So if Legal Mind does so choose, he can totally run in here and try to create some sort of force field concave to make sure that the uh, Marine Army cannot actually run away, or at least cut it in half. And we do see the, uh, the Zealots coming up with more Zealots flipping in with one. Oh, we actually do see that force field wall. These Marines and Marauders are going to die to all of this fire. We actually have one lucky Marine sitting there. That guy is like, let me out, let me out. Oh my gosh, let me out. And he's still, whoa, he's getting ballsy. No, he, and he doesn't actually run back. And we actually see him trying to kill that pylon. These Zealots are sitting here pretty, he, they weren't really used effectively in the sense that they're, they're balled up, and you can't deploy them. If you split them up and try to run one out here and try to get some sort of surround... Oh, no, Zealot surround. Whoa, crazy. But with the le with the legs, they will be able to charge those units and basically make contact with them in a good in a good manner. And we actually do see Legal Mind trying to make some sort of contact. Oh, we actually see Ghost come here trying to knock down those shields. Great use of them. I don't know if they actually got the shields. We can see a few of these uh, units right here without shields, but these guys are rushing in and trying to take down these Marines. We do see the Marines backed up in, in this force. Of course, a great force build right here. These Marine and Marauders are forced to fight. Will they make it? No, they will not. All of these sentries and these Marauders will cut them all down in this nice little bloody mosh pit of Marine juice and a couple of Marauders speckled in there. So great use of force fields right there. Those force fields denied the Marines and Marauder mobility forcing them to fight a battle that they were not prepared to fight. So, of course, Korean retreating right now. Uh, of course, we just see the Zealot running out there trying to be a hero. He actually does make it. Korean wisely retreating continuously. Of course, he does have enough Marines to be able to uh, stim repeatedly without any sort of fear of leaving them softened up. So, Legal Mind doing a really good job there of using those force fields, causing, basically causing that battle to be fought because he knew he was going to win that with all those Zealots soaking up all that damage and these Immortals and Sentries being able to sit back and 
basically DPS the units down without being molested at all, with one stalker sitting in there as a sort of moral support. Now we do see uh, the medevacs moving out here, trying to get some sort something going on for Korean. Maybe trying to do a base drop. You know, well, these guys are whoa, whoa. You got to uh, be careful. Of course, these things will not be able to drop those medevacs as quickly as stalkers. But we actually do see them moving up here into the base. Are these Marines sitting up on the high ground going to be enough? These miners sitting on the ramp, denying these zealots any sort of coverage, bottlenecking them, doing a great job. That we actually do see a oh, we actually see Templar entering the field. Wow, totally missed that. And we see some more floor fields going down. All these miners going down, except for two. These Marine, uh, these medevacs are really feeling the pain right here. Of course, we do have another Marine push coming out. From the main base, more force fields going down. These immortals are in danger right now. We do see an Archon coming down. That Archon, great use of the Archon, or our great use of the Templar. Once you've used up those Templars, are in, in the heat of battle, dropping them into Archons is a great call there. They do have a nice AoE splash damage, which is great against that bio ball. And of course, we do have two brave Marauders sitting here. Are they going to be called up in the Medivacs? Yes, they are. One Medivac going down, not the one with the units in it. So two Medivacs running away, one going down with the two Marauders in there. And Legal Mind has a pretty vicious uh, little army sitting here with four immortals. So these immortals are going to do a lot of damage. Here we go see a little bit more uh, lag. Perhaps you're letting me down there, buddy. Either way, we see this command center trolling the field. Is he going to go for the island or is he going to drop down and be an orbital command? They're not orbital command, but a... Uh, come on, planetary fortress. There we go. Got to love those planetary fortresses, especially with that armor upgrade. Oh, we have one high Templar sitting out here. Basically trying to be a badass. Will he get taken out? Oh, he's being ballsy. Oh, and we actually see feedback coming down on those medevacs, basically neutering them. And we see a nice field battle right here with more Templar Reign of Pain coming down on those Marauders. Those Marauders are being cut to pieces. These Marines trying to focus down this uh, Immortal. Is it going to be enough? I don't know. That sucker goes down and the Immortal goes down. We see another Archon Ball coming up here. These Marines and Marauders are trying to run away desperately. You see that medevac go down in a blaze of glory. Well, actually, not a really blaze glory. She was actually running away with her tail in between her legs. But we have one Marauder and four Marines that are still left over. And we actually see a push on the Orbital Command. Is it going to be enough? I don't know, especially with that Ghost right there knocking out all but one of those shields. Great use of that Ghost right there. And we are going to see these Zealots and these Immortals going down so quickly because they don't have their shields. The basic, the, the premise behind the Immortals' real strength right there is that shield and the use of those Ghosts. Knocking out that shield basically renders them just some hard-hitting weak unit as you see one going down and